Okay, so you're at the end of this learning resource on the only way is ethics. Hopefully you've managed to work through it and I'm uh, really hoping that you've raised more questions that we can all share and learn from um, rather than gaining answers from this. You've had a really good opportunity throughout this learning resource to explore some different aspects of research, especially in relation to the care that you deliver across health and social care professions. So whatever your field of practice is, think about those clinical issues. And then if you were to be doing research on those issues or even reading other people's research on them, what are the ways in which ethics actually plays a point um, and a part of this? You will have covered the four key pillars of research ethics and lots of other readers have more than four. So these are four key ones. And you're used to applying these in health and social care settings, but you can't unlink health and social care provision to research on that same provision. So it's really important to make sure that all four of these underpin um, every aspect of your project. Make sure that you're able to, uh, to show how you're following good ethical principles throughout. So first of all, ask yourself some, uh, yourself some questions. What is your research project? What are you hoping to do? Because so many different projects will have ethical dimensions involved. Okay, so what, um, what is the project you're doing? And then ask yourself, well, who's this project about? So who is it including? Who do you want to do beneficence, do goodness for? But unintentionally, you may be excluding some people. And the very fact that they're being excluded means that you're not doing good for them. And what's the opposite of not doing good? Maleficence, badness. Okay, so it may be unintentional on your part, but say, for example, um, that you, you might have noticed with the picture uh, that, that I've been using from Adobe on this Adobe Express page. It's one, two, three, four, five, seven, count the hands. Right, there are six hands up in the air and the word ethics are written across them. But see if you can remember or look back at the front of your page. What ethnicity would you say the people are just by the look of their hands? So even when we're using imagery in health and social care, that's important. What age groups are you representing? What ethnicity? ethnicities, what genders, uh, what orientations, what abilities. All these particular aspects of the research that you're doing means that you have to consider who are you including, but are you actually excluding others? And if by excluding them, there's a negative impact on them, then you're not being just towards them. You're not empowering them in the way in which you're empowering your research recipients. So these are ethical questions that you need to consider throughout. And when you consider those four key pillars of ethics, think of those in relation to the work you're doing, okay? So when you're looking at your particular pro pro uh, projects, consider how is my research going to impact, even when you disseminate it, how will it impact? Are there people who are gonna feel left out of this? And if they're left out, why are they left out? Or are you including people? And by including them, what's the goodness you want to do? And that leads on to the very last little slide I want to present here. And that is for you to ask yourself this question. What difference can you make? Because the care you deliver to others, the care you manage on behalf of others, and now the research you're doing is all aimed to do beneficence, to do good. What difference can you make? I hope you've enjoyed this learning resource and I look forward to sharing uh, your comments and questions um, either in class or on our um, virtual learning environment. Thanks so much for listening and for sharing.